So I'm Liam. I'm from uh, Oracle. Uh, I'm here to talk to you again about uh, the VMAs, uh, trying to reduce the uh, the contention on the MMAP uh, lock. I think we named it now. So it used to be the MMAP SEM. Some people call it. I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of names for it. It's the MMAP lock. Um, so first that that thing. Yeah. Um, so, two years ago, I think it was, uh, Matthew stood up here and he put up the one, uh, the, the longer one, I guess, um, specifying how, how we handle faults right now, or used to handle faults then. Um, and the problem we had was that the GFP kernel allocations there in the middle were kind of fooling us up for RCU. And in the last five minutes of that talk, uh, Mel Gorman chimed in and he said, hey, why don't, why don't we lock uh, each VMA? And Matthew said, yes, I wanted to do that, but you know that's kind of a half step. So I figured, why don't we just go all the way? Um, but we kind of agreed that we should just do the halfway mark. I don't know if CERN is here. Oh, yeah, he is. OK, good, because uh, he did most of it. Um, I just sort of fixed all the problems I introduced in the maple tree. Yeah, <laughs> all the parts that I broke before he got to it. Um, so this is kind of how it looks now. We didn't want to, I think David was asking that we didn't mess everything up so that people who went in didn't know what was going on. So it looks pretty similar now. Uh, what we do is we try to use the RC root lock. And if we can't, we still fall back to the old method. But if we do use the RCU lock, we walk the maple tree under the lock, and we lock the VMA itself. Um, and then we unlock the RCU, and we continue on. And so then we can allocate or, or whatever we want. And then at the end, we release the lock that we've taken using release fault lock. Uh, release fault lock will either lo unlock the MMAP SEM or uh, the VMA itself. So it's kind of annoying that it's sort of hidden. Uh, but it works, and uh, there's, you know, naming is hard, so we just did that. Um, so how does it work? Uh, or rather, how does it play out? Uh, so without the MAP lock, um, we started looking at... Uh, the performance, because someone at, I believe, was it? Someone, someone sent us uh, an email about the performance saying, oh my gosh, the, uh, in 6.1 we're noticing that there's a performance uh, drop and we're really worried uh, because you know 6.0 was, was not too bad, 6.1 is worse. So we checked 6.2 and, and it's, it's getting worse. So it's not getting any better, so what, do you, what are you guys doing? And uh, we said, oh yeah, right. So um, we knew we were going to take a performance hit. Uh, switching to maple tree on certain benchmarks, and this is one of them. This benchmark, the mean performance of word counting benchmark, or what, whatever it was, it, it, it had Yeti in the name. Uh, but basically, what it did was it, it loaded a really big file and then M protected a lot of it and then faulted in portions. And so there were writes going on uh, while readers were trying to read to count these words. And so there's, there's a lot of contention on the MFSM. Which was great because we said, "Hey, why don't you check a newer kernel?" And so they started going through the kernels, and as they got to six four, which was when the per VMA lock hit, um, there was a big drop. And then slowly, as we added more and more cases, you can see the performance numbers go down. And let's pretend I didn't put that zero there. Um, I, I cut off the numbers because they were even longer than that, if you can believe it. Uh, but you can see we went from 3.9 seconds to less than one. So it's pretty awesome, right? Um, so we implemented this because we can use the maple tree for the RCU lock, uh, walks. And VMAs are RCU freed, thanks to CERN. And per VMA locks, again, thanks, thanks to CERN. And the fault handling, thanks to Matthew. Um, and then we started adding other things. Other people started adding other things. Uh, but there's a bit of a caveat because it doesn't support, isn't supported on all architectures. Now, these are the ones that have implemented it. If your architecture isn't on the list, please delete it from the tree. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so today we have kind of a common pattern that people want to look up, or I guess not people, but you know, kernel code, wants to look up the address, um, but they never really search. They always want this address. Um, and, and they all use MM memory lock, which has lock VMA under RCU. Thank you, Siren. Um, but it has to support the fallback. Uh, we can't guarantee we're going to get the VMA isolated. And if we can't get the VMA isolated, then we take the RCU read lock so that we know that the write has completed. Matthew had this idea of uh, having a toggle of the write to know that the write was done to see if we could re-lock it. Uh, that hasn't happened. I don't know if it's going to. Maybe it will. Who knows? Um, so yeah, so there, there's, there's still some, some caveat, caveats. Uh, the, the other one is th it's tricky with uh, unpopulated and non-memory because in the fault path, we may need to allocate the non-memory and it, it gets kind of complicated uh, because when you look at the non-memory to, you can, you can allocate when you have the RCU, but, but you may need to examine the previous or the next VMA and that's where the problem lies. Um, because we don't have those locked, right? So they, they may change on us. So either we have to lock multiple VMAs, which is just, it, no, we're not doing that. Um, or, or we have to find another way, or we just live with it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of kind of messy in, in the Anon thing. And, and the other complication with the Anon is certain users need to handle the Anon case differently. Uh, the page fault handler checks if there's an anon, if it's populated. Um, but then user fault FD cares if it's a shared anon or th 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 there's like a special case. I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I, I got it wrong in the, on the mailing list too. So uh, I think Jan Horn picked up the error uh, in the patch set for the user fault stuff, pointed it out. Um, so yeah, there's, there's multiple users, but everyone sort of has this common, common pattern that's kind of emerging, uh, but everyone is writing their own sort of handling of it because there's you know, little, little differences that make huge problems if you don't get it right. Uh, so where do we want to go with this? I think kind of what we want to look for is, uh, well, one, what does everyone need to do? I don't really know who, who's going to hold up the uh, MAP lock more or who wants to speed up their code. I mean, I, I do. But you know, um, if, if you're taking the MAP lock, uh, you should look at using this. And if you can, uh, we should try and figure out how to generalize the lookup so we don't all write the same bugs and find them later again. Um, so if we can at all figure that out, it would be great. Uh, recently, there was a, uh, a post for a proc VMA query request. So instead of parsing the uh, proc maps file, uh, someone, some, I think it was like four responded, wanted to uh, have a, an, an interface where you can query a particular address. But they didn't just want to query a particular address, they wanted to search for it. So, you know, instead of looking up that particular address, you start there and, you know, the fine VMA version, basically. Uh, so there's a few use cases that differ, and it would be good if we could kind of figure out amongst ourselves what our interface should look like, uh, you know, to, to better share code without introducing bugs. Um, I, I, I would say we could have some function pointer in there, but, you know, the last 10 years happened, so we can't do that. Um, so there's, there's some ideas where we could kind of clean this up and unify the users to use the same sort of interface and that would be good. Uh, so if, if, I mean, that's kind of a discussion I'd like to see happen, maybe not now or maybe now. Um, the other thing about it uh, is that the VMA tree is 
not atomic. I mean, it's atomic if you look at it with the lock, but if you don't take the lock, which is essentially what this is about, if, if you don't take the lock and use RCU read, uh, the tree itself can change with writes while you're looking at it, or it can be in the middle of a change that does not appear atomic because you didn't take the lock that makes it look atomic. Uh, so we kind of have to figure out what we're going to do there. Uh, the two cases that kind of um, stick out is the uh, the splitting. Yeah, Liam, I, th I think it'd be good to talk about what kind of consistency we guarantee if you're walking the tree while holding only the RCU lock. Obviously, if you're holding the MMAP sem for, for read or for write, you get a fully consistent tree. When you're holding it for when, when you when you're trying to walk the tree holding only the RCU read lock. A, we guarantee that any VMA you find will not go away because they're all RCU freed. So first of all, we're guaranteeing you're not getting any, uh, you're not seeing stale from, from that point of view. You're not seeing something's being freed. You're seeing a VMA, but that VMA may have been deleted unless you, unless you have the VMA semaphore, like the page fault path does, the VMA can go away underneath you. Right, it may no longer be part of the tree. And so for some users, that, that, that's OK. Because if you're looking at slash proc, then you know that by the time the read from slash proc has returned, it might be stale. So it's OK if we return a stale VMA under some circumstances, but not others. So it's going to depend on individual users whether they are OK with having a stale one. If they're not OK with having a stale one, then they either need to take the MMAP sem for read, as, as they're probably doing now, or they need to take the VMA lock for, for read. And if they don't get it, then they need to say, oh, that was stale, you know, restart the whole lookup. Possibly, like PageFault Path does, uh, while, while holding the MMAP uh, read lock, so that, so that they're guaranteed to make forward progress. Right, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I guess the other thing is, uh the proc maps file uh, would read in uh, 4,096 bytes and then print it out and then continue, right? So you could get like this tearing at that boundary where you drop the lock when you're returning. So, uh, I'm just gonna look, so I'm gonna take you drop the lock while you're returning and you get like all these, it, something could happen, right? And then you continue reading from that point and you may get a different answer. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, we also need to be careful about uh, the fact that VMA, obje uh, VMA itself might not be gone, but some elements in it, let's say VM file, is not really RCU safe. So that might be gone. So you might stumble on it, and RCU does not guarantee that it's valid. I, I stumbled there. <laughs> <laughs> Could there be an efficient way to just detect that anything changed? Meaning like if you're in user space, you get some, I don't know, magic ID and you do your parsing and then you check if anything changed and if anything changed, you can assume maybe it's stale, maybe I should retry. Right, so I think that's kind of built into the VMA, like the sequence number that you added. Would that... It if, if, you're, if you're looking VMA, yeah. If you're looking VMA, it will not change. Uh, but if again that number comes with the VMA lock. Yes, the n the if number. You're not using yeah, it, yeah. You're the not the number it. is is a I think a, a uint or something, so it overflows yeah, frequently. Is that is that right? Uh, that number basically, when you lock lock a VMA, MM has a sequence number, and uh, we assign the VMA sequence number equal to that. So that's how system knows that this VMA is locked. We shouldn't be. Uh, modifying it. Uh, but again, you are talking about pure RCU walk, which does not lock VMAs. Uh, if, you, if you lock VMA, it's not going to change up from under you. And I guess like if we assume that everybody who modifies the tree takes the MAP lock and write mode, you could have like a sequence number on the yeah, so MM, we, which could some, someone could read and could say, yeah, well, I read something, but the number changed. So it might something might be stale. 
Yeah, yeah. So we we make sure we make sure any mod modifications uh, do lock the tree. But I think, sir, you had a bigger value in there, and it caused cache issues. No, uh, actually, I had an implementation of proc reading proc uh, maps using something like this sequence number. But the problem is, okay, you uh, you identify that it has been changed under you, but you already outputted part of it. You can't really restart from the beginning. So what do you do? And you might already output the stale information. Let's say you output a VMA which was actually split or merged after after you already wrote it out. Yeah, it's not it's not just stale, it's also inconsistent, right? Like if yeah. someone updated the range, right? Like you started output in beginning and then like ending ended while you were outputting, right? That's just no use. Yeah. I'm that's, that's someone by the way. <laughs> oh I see. Yeah. And, and that actually can yeah. And so I, I was going to ask, like, okay, if we do this via uh, RCU lock, right, and then we still have to do this per VMA semaphore, is it still faster than just a map, uh, like try lock thingy that proc map is doing? So it's not about faster; it's about not blocking somebody else. Yeah, you don't stop the writes from occurring. Is basically writes can occur, which most likely will not be in your area. Right, and and so we can do a lot more in parallel. Okay, but just just back to your point about inconsistency, we actually do have that today, and that, and that's something that somebody was trying to say earlier, and didn't I'm not sure it quite came across. Cross is that if the proc file is larger than four kilobytes, we will output the first four kilobytes, drop the MAT lock, reacquire it. Now this doesn't happen very often. Most most times. You know, proc, proc maps is not that big, but sometimes it is. And but I suspect user space doesn't see it doesn't ever. know about so, this. So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're making it more common for user space to see uh, an inconsistent value, and that may be a problem. Yeah, so in this case, this proc VMA request query, that that's, I'm the one who, who's trying to add this, right? Like, I think in this case, it's like just one VMA that we'll find, right? And we will output like information about quickly, right? So consistency there matters. I understand it can be stale by the time that user space sees this, but at least, you know, start should be less than end and so on, right? So like, <laughs> Can we guarantee that? No. So I, I actually think you need to drop your patch set and talk to Stephen because Stephen's going to do all of this in the kernel. Stephen hasn't been paying attention to any of this, so he has no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, basically, he's, he's trying to do S frames but in user space instead of in the kernel. Oh. Not me, not me. No, no, go over there. Yeah, but and and then you're you're so so most of the time when user space is looking at this maps file, they're like, oh my gosh, the process is slow. Let's read this maps file, and they block writes to the VMA tree, and it slows the process down. Like, why isn't this working? Let's read it again, right? And the kernel could read it twice and allocate memory. Yeah, but we only want to take the lock for that 4K so that we don't cause. Pro to stop. No, I don't. But why do you want to chunk it in 4K? The, it, it's because it takes a long time. Just keep allocating memory in the kernel and speed it out so you can hold the it's kind of coherent. But you, the, the reason you don't want to take the lock for longer than 4K is because it takes so long to do. So the problem was, and why it was split into 4K, is because it was too slow. So making it bigger is going to make it slower for every time you. What? You're talking about the MF set. Yeah. I'm talking about doing RCU. Just read it twice so that you get a consistent answer. And let offer the whole thing so that you don't have the issue with the blocking. And then look at it, like compare it twice? Yeah. That's the typical way you solve this problem. Uh, well, no, I don't like that. But, but there is like VMA, VM file and stuff like this where you get passed from it, right? Like there are related objects that I don't know if they are even RCU protected. It's it's not just VMA fields that you care about. It's all the information that's related to VMA. You got the VMA lock. No, yeah, but we, no I, you have to take every VMA lock. Oh my god, no, we're not doing that. No, no, no. <laughs> like, right? We're not taking every VMA lock when we iterate through like that. If you uh, if you are doing just RCU, you have to because you have to for the because as I said, let, let's say uh, VM file might change, 
and nothing, there's nothing that protects it. Okay. Well, I mean, could we read it twice? Is that like a thing that would work out? But if it doesn't match, you have to redo everything and there's no guaranteed progress or? Then you read it twi four times, yeah. yeah. That doesn't look, sound good. Yeah. Or this by the second time, it doesn't like this give the stale information. <laughs> 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 we give up. <laughs> and then we're going to give them stale information anyways. Why don't we just give it to them faster? <laughs> just or both information. <laughs> <laughs> XOR. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't, uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the problem we're up against, right? We're trying to figure out how to, to solve that. The other thing that, kind of came to light was the map fixed operation ends up showing you something that should never exist and we definitely can't have that go through um, because that's actually two operations it's an on map and then a map and map so we're creating a gap and then precisely filling it uh, so there could be others that are like that M -remap. second M, M remap is it's a bit different. M, M remap is a bit different in that you may miss it if it moves as you read down, if it moves one way, but if you move it the other way, it can show up twice. But again, that's it. the M remap fixed, which I think does the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll punch a hole in it, wherever yeah. it's going. But, but the, uh, those problems with M remap, they exist today as well if you read over 4K, right? So it's, we're not making it worse, we're just making it faster and still broken. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a bug of a feature? Right? And so, but I mean, th these are trade offs, right? And, and like Matthew said, we're not changing the guarantees per se. I mean, there could be more stale data or not stale data still, right? But. Yeah, we just inc increase the probability of seeing that. Right? Yeah, increasing the probability by speeding up the write. So it's kind of, I think, worth the trade-off. So, so just again, maybe just add a sequence number, expose it to user space, and let user space deal with it. <laughs> there was a change, try again. There was a change, try again. It's like not your task to solve that, it. That's even better than they have today, though, right? Like if we yeah, then they can identify that there might be an issue. Yeah, right the now, they might not be able to first, identify. The first thing could be the sequence number. I mean, the, the thought occurs to me, we, we, we did already output stale data to user space, but we didn't yet return from the syscall. So we could return a short read. Or we could rewind a little bit and, 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 and do it again. <laughs> right. I mean, we, 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 we've written to user space, but what we've written to user space was true at one point. It's just no longer the version that we want them to see. So we could actually rewind and, and, and just overwrite in user space. And, and at this point, everyone who understands sec file is saying, Willie, really, stop that. You can't but, do but, that. But aren't we, again, not guaranteeing forward progress and thus may restart yeah. multiple times? Man. Well, then you can take just a MA block and read mode. Oh, yeah. no. But, but then we know writes are going on and we're planning to slow them down. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good point, Liam. That um, so, so, so I, th I think perhaps people don't understand the real problem here, which is that you what, what you have is a high priority process and then a very low priority monitoring process. And so, if the monitoring process holds the lock for read, then the writes back up on it, and then because our RW SEMs are fair, the, the the subsequent reads back up behind the write lock, and you your your monitoring process has just taken down your entire data center. <laughs> right, otherwise we wouldn't care. <laughs> Would it be slightly better if instead of copying, the, like filling the whole buffer and then iterating twice to make sure it's consistent, if you copy the actual data, like the actual structs, which would take less time and would take less memory, and then you iterate twice over that. And so then if you have a consistent view, just print the buffer. So you say like dupe mmap and then <laughs> dump it. <laughs> And, okay. and then all those f pointers in the, for files in the VMAs still might be wrong. No, don't, don't copy the actual like structs. Copy the data that you're going to show user space. Just don't put it as text, which would be faster. And then well, once you have a consistent view, change it to text. I, I, again, I think like the, the sh you, you'd have to have a deep copy, right? And right, but you had a consistent view. And at that point, view. you're done. But, but you had a consistent view. You have a consistent view. 
in binary, and then you just compare the text later. But it, it's stale, but it's consistent. But but the thing is, so the VMAs, like you said, the VMAs have pointers to things, right? Like the file pointer, and and that stuff is used. Right. So but we would have to copy that as well, and that would right. become very. Just copy the same data you'd output, but just don't fill the buffer as text. Copy it as like integers in the kernel, which would be faster. But then again, you can't guarantee forward progress. Oh yeah, yeah, that problem's still there. I'm not yeah, fixing yeah. that. <laughs> you, you can't solve that problem. No. No, no, so just, I, I like the idea of uh, having the sequence number and being like, yeah, so stale data, do what you want, right? It, well, well, it's not, I mean, it's probably our problem because they're going to just turn around and say, hey, give me that data again. But at least we're not stopping the writes from occurring and having an inversion and, you know, taking down a data center. So something just occurred to me, which is that we... You're saying struct file is, is not being freed in an RCU safe way. What if we mark that slab cache as being type safe by RCU? That guarantees that we see a struct file. And so. You know, I, 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 I remember, I remember how, how, how FPUT works. But my, my, my point is that if we know that this memory may have been reused as a different struct file, but it is definitely a struct file, then we can copy the data out of it, go back and check that the pointer in our RCU-freed VMA still points to that same struct file, then we know that the data we got is good without having to go and upset all of the FPUT code. Mm. Hmm. What about is the address and stuff like that that's referenced? What about the what, sorry? Like the entries, paths, all that stuff. The entries, paths. Yeah, I... I think D-entries are already type safe by RCU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, th I think D-entries are already type safe by RCU, aren't they? We also have the anon name or something, or the name. I don't think that is uh, RCU freed either. I don't, I don't know what else. Oh, well, it's not used. Well. So I just want to make make a comment that if we add the printing of a sequence number, we'll probably guaranteed to break more existing users than uh, giving some out inconsistent output, but correctly formatted one. Can I add a VM stat too? Yeah, I'm pretty sure to uh, hear the answer from Linus about that, because uh, no, you shouldn't do that. Uh, but uh, back to no progress uh, thing, uh, is that a real problem? Because uh, if you just make the user space to retry them, you are not solving any problem. Uh, if you just take that proc file reading too long, that can happen already because you are allocating in that, in that read, right? Because a sequence file needs to allocate space to collect the data. And that can take ages. So no user space should rely on proc uh, PID maps to happen quickly. So are you saying that it's not a problem that we don't have forward progress? Or that yeah, yeah, so that you can retry internally if you know that something has gone terribly wrong and you just restart everything from, from the beginning just to make sure that you provide somehow more reasonable data because uh, that data is outdated the moment you <laughs> return to the user space anyway. Yeah, but I mean, they, they, deal with, they deal with broken data today, so we're, they are, right? It's tear, it tears at 4,096 or 4K boundary for them. So if you remap, then yeah, they, we, there's no guarantee that those two pieces glued together make a coherent, coherent sense, right? And so, I mean, yeah, we, I guess we could keep trying until eventually it works, but then we're, we could potentially have a, I, I mean, I guess we'd have to drop the reference to the MM struct in case the entire process goes away while we're doing this, right, as, as teardown occurs or whatever, or, or something happens that is killing the process, then, because otherwise we could just spin forever. Um, I don't know if that's better than just giving marginally incorrect data that could happen anyways. I, I, I don't know. I think the only th 
the only thing that you should be caring about is that uh, you do not access stale data from the kernel that could leak something or blow up or anything else. But beyond that, I don't think that even existing user space and quite realistically, most of the proc PID maps users is cat, <laughs> which is 4K repeating until you just get at end of file. Uh, maybe there, there is some user space that tries to scale the buffer size until it fits everything in and then just... Do <laughs> so I, I'm not really sure that we are solving anything that is not broken already. Yeah. Uh, Except for that uh, file might, might be stale, which might not be the case because it's RC free anyway. And if you just want to have slightly more correct data, then you can retry internally before you return to the user space. It will take longer. It will be still broken. <laughs> <laughs> what what if you retry for a few times and then you take the in-map lock eventually, which will guarantee forward progress? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I don't think it's this important. I mean, I, I didn't feel like, all I wanted to do was make sure we didn't see something that should never exist, right? Like if, if we're creating a, a gap and then filling it and the gap can show up, that's a problem because people say, well, why is there a gap in this, in this memory? But if, uh, if we just want to sequence count it, I guess that I don't, I don't really mind. I mean, if, if, if you have a few retries and 90% of the cases are, are fine, you, do, you only hold the in-map block 10% of the time, that's a great improvement, right? Yeah, but then you have unexpected stalls, you just which said, is probably worse than expected in correct data. Because if you want to have correct data, then you freeze the application make sure that there are no address space manipulation and then read proc, uh, proc PID maps. There is no other way to get reasonable data uh, other than that. Everything else is just opportunistic and right, but hopefully but okay. correct. Yeah, so I guess the, the kind of processes that are so busy that they cause you inconsistencies are those that will be affected if you retry and or take the map block so yeah I, I i i don't really like the idea of retrying i just because of the forward progress argument um i i don't know if the sequence counter uh idea would work with the the cache line stuff for the causing causing cache line invalidation right for for changing the sequence numbers but it's worth a shot um the other the other uh, idea is to, you know, fix the tree to to be more stable, which is possible. Um, so we could do that as well. So I, I don't know which way to. I, I really don't have a preference. I guess we can try like, not, not introducing new kinds of inconsistencies, but if we are making the existing ones more f frequent, then hope that nobody will get too broken. And if they do, then we can reconsider. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I sent certain some patches to get rid of the map fixed uh, gap that's created. Um, I don't know if there are any others. Like you said, there are our map stuff, um, which exists today as well. So. Uh, not sure if you could also see something if, if like an MAP would fail that you would temporarily already see something. The MAP fail path is terrible in that, uh, and this, this is another reason I was kind of leaning towards fixing the tree, because basically the way, the way that we need to do this is to prepare that we're going to be doing this and then do the rights that we know will succeed. Um, and if we change it so that we prepare and then like basically like the whole, what is it, prepare complete? Is that, that's not the right word, prepare is not right. Commit. Commit? Yeah. I don't know, I, I don't know if we use commit in the, we use prepare. That's, that's the journaling. Okay, the journaling one, but, yes, but, but in the MM there's like a prepare and commit, or I, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, all right, well, anyways, so 
right now we don't unwind the prob the changes, and if we do it that way, fix a tree, we could potentially not do the changes if they're going to fail, and that might be better. But no one seems to care about that anyways, I don't know. Anyways, well, thanks everyone. Thanks for the discussion. <laughs>